Hi everyone, welcome to Pet's Best Friend. I am your moderator. The star of the show is Dr. Anaya Cathio. And folks, let me tell you right off front, if you want to find out any information about anything that we discuss or any of your pets, it's cathio.com is his website and his phone number is 570-655-2412. I say that because when we run this show, a lot of you have been calling the station here at SSP TV and asking him for his phone number. Uh, so I'm telling you right up front, it's 655-2412 and it's cathio.com, and we have a great show for you today. My good friend, my brother, Dr. Anaya Cathy. Anaya, how are you? Fine. Thank you very much, Sam, for having me again and again and again for over a decade here. You know, we brought, we, 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 the first show we did, we talked about why the show was backed up again. Uh, you were back on air, yeah. and uh, I'm glad it's back because a lot of people have been watching, a lot of people have been responding, and, um, of course, you know, we got a little uh, Bijan Gucci, uh, and um, so, um, but one person said to me, Sam, why did you wait three years or two years before you brought the show back? You should have been able to do that. You're a big guy. And I guess, it's, you know, you know how I felt about Samson. Exactly. And it just devastated me. And, and you deal with that every day. God bless you. Yeah, I mean, it's very really tough. It's tough. I mean, you see the good things, the little puppies, which we're going to talk about today. Yeah, yeah. Then you have to say when you have to let them down or, or, or they have to put dogs down or cats or any. It's uh, very hard. Very it, hard. You know, it's very hard, you know, for me and my staff and uh, because you, you love every one of those animals. I love every one The only one, ones I, I hate are the snakes, I'm telling you. you I should, love snakes. Oh, too. God, yeah. Naya, what are you doing? We have a great show today, yeah. folks. We're going to talk about uh, we're going to talk about a puppy, uh, what you're doing at puppies. We're going to talk about when you let your animals r run loose and then they breed. This is not a good thing. A dog who had a leaky ur urine, uh, how, what was the results there? A white tiger cub. What happened there, okay, where the mother, mother was not taking care of them? Uh, then what's happening, uh, how many people, uh, we view animals a different way, but they're in Pakistan they viewed them another way. And, of course, Dr. Cathy, who is very well in, in, um, working with um, uh, the United Nations and also Washington and Pakistan government, uh, he spent time with the Prime Minister and also some uh, time with Senator Casey. We'll, we'll hear about that. It is responsible ownership. It still uh, continue to uh, increase. People go buy pets. They do not spay them. They do not neuter them. What happens? They go outside and they breed, and uh, they have unwanted uh, animals, mostly kittens. And these kittens are not in the wild that mother can go and bring a food and give it to them. These kittens are born in the garages, in the car, leftover cars, in the garbage area someplace, or dump area someplace. And uh, these uh, little kittens, you know, they have uh, environmental challenges. Sometimes it's too cold for them, sometimes it's too warm for them. It, if too cold for them, they freeze to death. If it's too, too warm for them, they get infections. And I have an orange kitten here I will show you that uh, this uh, poor kitten was suffer suffering, uh, suffering, some good person come down and pick it up from the street and uh, adopt it. What happened that this kitten developed a mild infection in the eye, then uh, secondary complications started and this kitten uh, not only lost the eye, was living with the gangrenous eye and with living with the pain. And uh, these things we see in our clinic uh, coming in more and more and more, especially to my clinic because uh, uh, in the community, I uh, you know, think that uh, if we take them to, the, to my hospital, I certainly give them attention whether or not sometime people have the money or not or something like that. So I performed the surgical procedure, cost me over $1,000 to put this kitten back uh, to uh, to norm uh, to normal state now the kitten can, could uh, survive so just when you look at the television you will view that you know what condition uh, these animals are born outside it's because we do not take the responsibility and spay them or neuter them i have a very low cost uh, cat clinic in wilkesbury uh, we do a very very reduced uh, uh, reduced rate uh, spaying and neutering like it's like very affordable if they can call my office at 8219390 they will find out the find out from the, the uh, Wilkesbury office Wilkesbury 8219390 so please uh, you know the, you know like be responsible for your animals and you just look at this poor orange kitten see how much he suffered so this is uh, one of the thing 
And this, again, is neglect, okay, and where you just let your cats or animals... Yeah, neglect just... is one thing, and irresponsibility is also thing. You know, you bring an animal home, you love him, you let them sleep with you or, you know, like play with them, pay attention to them, give a good time to them, groom them, feed them, and take him to your veterinarian every six months. Why every six months? It's because, uh, Sam, these animals age much faster than um, okay. than human being. Yes. Then you know, dog is like uh, uh, gets 80 years old in like about uh, 12 years or so. Yeah. In yeah. The, and it, it happens so rapid, and the tumors are you know they develop tumors, breast tumors, prostate tumors. Next time I will be here, I will show you a testicular tumor that weighed five pound in dog, and wow. they was uh, living with it because they age fast. When they get older, they get these these problems and. Uh, uh, and whenever you see small growth or whenever you see small tumor or something, it has to come out immediately if you can. Don't wait for too long. Mm -hmm. Sometime like a melanoma, you know, it can uh, metastatize to the lungs or go someplace else. And uh, uh, there, are, uh, there, are, there are other malignant tumors, you know, and they can go into to the liver or someplace else. So whenever you see a tumor, you know, in the dog or growth in the dog, have, have them removed. Uh, now, we're talking about buying puppies, because I have a little yeah. puppy, Gucci. Uh, what's the story with that? I have, a, there are you know, lots of things, you know, learning about the puppies. Before you bring the puppy home, you make a puppy-proof house, otherwise they'll get into things and they will swallow. Especially when you are eating a food and touching a toy uh, that has a food smell to it or something, and the, the, even the adult dog, they will swallow, they will think it's a food. It's a food then you have to take him out from the stomach. It's a very expensive surgical procedure, unnecessary pain. So keep a puppy proof, a puppy proof up. Another puppy that I have, a beautiful English bulldog puppy, came to me, looked very healthy. When I look at the nose of the puppy, it was like pale. It should have been pink. If you notice your puppy's nose is pale, most likely uh, this puppy has an internal parasite, which is a common problem. Hookworms and the roundworms, they live of the nutrients uh, in the intestine of, uh, that was supposed to go to the puppy's body. So these uh, parasites, they are sucking out all the nutrients. And so when the nutrients is taken out from the puppies, uh, they become anemic. They do not form too much blood in their system. So the uh, puppy apparently look very healthy. now. Animals, they do not show uh, the, uh, the, 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 you know, they do not show the sign of sickness unless they are really sick. Because by the time the puppy show you the sign of sickness, it is uh, kind of very late. So you try to get them to your veterinarian. Yeah, well, you know what, speaking of puppies, guess who just came into the, bring up, this is our little puppy here, Debbie, bring him on. Oh so we God. got a surprise guest. Oh, oh there's you. your. There's oh you. my God! Look at it. Give me kisses. Give me kisses. Oh my God! Give me kisses. Give me kisses. That's our little, uh, oh my Gucci. God! Give me That's kisses. My best, best friend, Dr. Oh my God! Look at how beautiful. We're just talking about puppies. Come it's on, let me hold my little much buddy. Much beautiful than me. Oh yeah. yeah. Hey, come on, come on, my here. Oh, you the best little puppy. Thank oh you. yeah. Thank oh. You. Thank well, folks, this is our new uh, addition to the family. It's uh, Gucci, uh, uh, little Bijan, and our good doctor. You're talking about puppies. You know, that's the same thing, talking about puppies and, and making them puppy proof, okay? Yeah. He's a good little boy, right? You're a good little boy. Well, you come to see your doctor today, right? Okay, honey, here yeah, it is. Yeah, you, you, I was talking about how to uh, check the anemia in the dog if they have a nose pink or it's yeah, pale. Yeah. But if you have a black dog, you look at the tongue. The yeah. tongue should be bright pink or something. Yeah, yeah. How's he doing? So, so the, the, the puppy, the English bulldog puppy came in. So I did, did the stool sample and it had a hookworm. So I'm showing you under the microscope to see how they look like. Yeah. And uh, they could be in, uh, in, in hundreds mm -hmm. and could be in thousands and uh, they can uh, cause uh, mm -hmm. unnecessary uh, loss of the life. And Gucci was beautiful puppy. You got a beautiful yeah. puppy. Thank you. You know how to uh, select a good woman and a good puppy. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Folks, uh, pet's best friend. Okay, uh, remember, uh, we, got, we got a lot more for you. We have a dog who had a leaky urine. Uh, and then also a white tiger cub was left by himself. How did this, uh, how did this tiger cub survive? Uh, and also, folks, um, 
Uh, we view animals a lot different than people in Pakistan and also the good doctor here, as you know, is very active with the United Nations for many, many years uh, and is um, practically a diplomat, really, and that's, um, he's very shy about this, but he's it's a very important position in the country, as you know. And uh, we'll talk about uh, the Prime Minister, what it means, and how it's working between the United States and Pakistan. Stay with us. Welcome back to Pets Best Friend, folks. I'm the moderator, Sam LaSampa. The main star here is Dr. Anaya Cathio. Thank you so much for all the kind uh, words when we brought the show back, folks. And you can watch this show anywhere in the world, 24-7, uh, on SSP TV. Just hit shows and go to Pets Best Friends. So if you have anyone who lives anywhere in the country, uh, you can watch this show anytime. It's very important, folks, because he gives a lot of valuable information. Speaking of information, uh, what we're doing right now is um, uh, come, showing people what you do, okay? Um, and now we had a dog here who, who was leaking urine, okay? Yeah. What was the story here? This female dog, uh, adult dog, uh, came to me from Hazelton. I love people in Hazelton and everywhere else. Came to me, said uh, several months, three months or more, the dog, when sleeps, she leaks urine on the floor or sits down, she leaks uh, uh, urine on the floor. But, uh, of course, it's a problem of the uh, urinary tract problem. Sometimes you have a calculus, calculi, stone formation in the kidney, or in the urinary bladder. With that condition, uh, you will have a pain, and uh, uh, you might, uh, these dogs might have uh, like a pink color urine or bright uh, color urine. And uh, they also, they drink lots of water and urinate a lot. And But this, uh, the history on this German Shepherd or Husky mixed dog uh, gave me the history. As, as soon as I uh, hear the history, I know what was the problem. It's very common in dogs that what was the, history? Uh, the, the history was that uh, involuntary urination. Like sit down, sit down here, and urine comes out by itself. Yeah. You automatic think you need a diaper here now. We have some kind of problem going on. But there is a pill. I put the animal on the pill, and uh, come back to me next day, next week. He said my dog never had had the uh, uh, leaky urine. I told him I was uh, not only veterinarian but a magician also. <laughs> 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 yeah, so what happens in uh, some dogs, they have uh, female dogs, they have a low estrogen or some hormones or the urinary bladder is fainter that is, uh, does not have a tone. We put him on the medication, a pill once a day or twice a day and it's very cheap. I put in the medication on the pill and problem, problem, resol problem wow. resolved. So sometimes things could look very uh, serious. different serious, yeah. but it could be not a big of a problem. Uh, here again, it's mm. so important for the veterinarian to do a, a, a checkup. Preventative medicine is always the best Absolutely. medicine, just like as human beings. Right. Every six months, bring your animal to and the And the good thing is he saw me on your show and come down to, come down to me. Oh, well, that's uh, good. So I'm very you know, let me to tell you, you you've yeah. saved a lot, especially the person in McAdoo with the cat. Mm -hmm. It was funny because when I was there in your office, she was there. She was indeed. And, you know, there is a person, you know, that you touched yeah. many, many lives because you came up from Pittston. That night when my yeah. wife called, uh, you drove 45 miles uh, in the evening uh, and you went into that person's home and took care of that cat and, and still taking care of that. And, and those are the kind of things that they don't know about Dr. Cat. I think it gave me great satisfaction. And uh, it's not money thing, you know, money when you pay the bill. But um, if, my, if I could give services to my community or the international community, uh, about the international community, I was in the State Department. We were talking so how the globalization is taking place so rapidly, we yes. never thought of it. So how we communicate uh, uh, with each other and with the different part of the world. And speaking about yeah. different parts of the world, we're gonna, we have a white tiger cub now, right. which is an interesting story about the mother leaving her or whatever. Uh, was that the case? What was the story with this like white tiger? Like a white, uh, white tiger cub, uh, I would also, uh, uh, I got a call from Pakistan and uh, the governor of uh, Pakistan, Punjab, was sitting with me in the Pakistan embassy. And uh, the call come from Governor's Town. See the coincidence or something. Uh, the guy got a call that we have a, a mother, a white, uh, a white tiger, you know, is, is not giving, keeping the cub or a baby, you know, baby tiger away, not giving her the milk or the milk is dried out. And uh, what, shall we, what shall we do? I said, of course, America is there for everybody. Who is in the trouble in the world? America is there for, uh, there for them. So I called my, uh, from the embassy, I called my secretary 
and through the Federal Express, we send uh, KMR like milk for this, uh, this cub. And now this cub is living. Otherwise, so many cubs have been lost because they could not get access to the uh, evaporated milk. So we send the evaporated milk uh, KMR for the puppies and for the kittens. What a great American service, Federal Express. Within 48 hours, the food was there, and you can see how big it is. The time I got the call, the cub was about like six inches. Now you look uh, on, on the television how big and how they how healthy it looks. Also, Prime Minister of Pakistan said there's a flood going on in Pakistan, and he said, let me tell you, America is uh, like so many miles away, send us the helicopters. You know, we have the, some, uh, some neighboring countries, you know, but he said that America is the first one to send 18 helicopters to rescue the people from the flood. We will talk uh, this thing uh, about... Uh, and and when you're talking time. about international, okay, uh, yes. again, uh, not only, you know, have you brought a lot of great veterinary medicine uh, and what you do in your, in your both clinics, and folks, again, his number is 655 2412, that's 655 2412, or the Wooksbury one. Remember, for low cost, um, it's paid new, it's paid and neutered, uh, 821 9390, folks. But um, this, there's a lot involved here. You know, when you're talking about, first of all, before we talk about how we view our animals here and yeah. how how important it is for the Pakistani animals, yeah. but let's talk about your, your, your trips to Pakistan and what you've been doing there. I had uh, the, the, this trip, I had a meeting with uh, high officials in uh, Pakistan and including the, the Prime Minister of Pakistan. There is a lots of misunderstanding between uh, uh, different countries. And I do the personal diplomacy, you know, with my own exp experience, experience from the Georgetown University, experience being with you and everything. Both sides, the people are very good. Both sides, the governments are very good, but the, you know there are some elements. They create uh, uh, create a mistrust between two uh, two countries, and they work underground. They have no faces, and they create a problems. Just like faceless enemies in Afghanistan, you don't see their faces. They are killing people and uh, killing people and uh, everything, and uh, creating a bad name for America. I happen to meet one of these crazy guy. And he is ready to kill me. He said, you're American, I'll kill him. I said, why don't you kill me first, but let me ask you one question. Uh, did you ever get sick in your lifetime? He said, yes, I got sick. And I said, did you ever receive the antibiotics and you lived? I said, yes. I said, what antibiotic you, uh, you use? I said, penicillin. I said, do you know where this penicillin come from? Missouri, America. You know, because of this medication, because of research of the West, you know, you are, you are living. I said, did you have a malaria? He said, yes. I said, where this medication come from? Research from the West, research from America. He's starting to think. You know, I changed his behavior. You know, from so on, he respected me. Not only that, he got me a cup of, uh, a cup of tea, to, uh, tea to drink. He was Taliban. He was Taliban. He was ready to kill me. But you know, sometimes you talk to people and you, you let them know, you know, what is, you know, like, uh, why they are doing this. And uh, you know so what is the how is the other par part of the world and you know where we are going you know we are living in the same globe or something, so education you know can change a lot rather than the guns and bullets or something like this. So he went and told the twenty other peoples, uh, amazing, you know, and they say our leader told her. I said, who makes a decision for you, uh, for you to live better, you or your leader? He says the leader. I said you guys are crazy. You should start making your own decision. I said, did I tell you anything wrong? He said, how come our leader never told us that, you know, this medicine comes from... Uh, and you know what, uh, Sam? They do not have the newspaper there. Yeah. Uh, where they, wherever there's a violence, there's, there's an, there is not even a newspaper there and anything. So it's a word of mouth. You throw the word of mouth, it goes a, as it is. Unless there's somebody like you and, you know, the television show like this one, that can change, yeah. they can change a lot, yeah. And you know, the fear of the unknown, you know, when you're, t when you're talking about Pakistan, you mm -hmm. know, you know, uh, and um, different countries, uh, sometimes we read them differently. We see they're, they're harboring the Taliban, they're yeah. harboring bin Laden, they're doing this, and which is just the opposite, okay? And, mm -hmm. and I think you, you know, you, you discuss that all the time. Right, right. You know, I, I go to the situation, this is all, I face uh, so many, like, questions about America, and they are so, mis you know, misinformed. Yeah. 
Yeah. Hold that thought, Doctor. Yeah. I want to take another break. Folks, Dr. Naya Cathio, uh, cathio.com, 655-2412 or 821-9390. Uh, folks, uh, give them a call. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to Pets Best Friend, folks. I'm Sam Lasant, your moderator. The star of the show is Dr. Naya Cathio, who travels to Pakistan quite frequently. And when you're there in Pakistan, what are you doing there, Doctor? Uh, in Pakistan, of course, the, the uh, bringing the America's softer image and telling them what is America all about. And uh, other thing is, like, of course, there's the dogs and cats beside the livestock. And I, you see in the video, there was a, when I was in Pakistan last time, there was a cat hit by a car. They brought it down to me. Uh, it was a good opportunity for me to call half a dozen veterinary, local veterinarians. And I told them how I fix the fractures so you can learn how to fix it, you know, show them how to fish rather than give fish. So I educate veterinarians there, even though there's not good sanitation, you know, there's not good like quality standards or something, but I'm trying to raise those standards. So you will see performing a surgical procedure in minimal, minimal standards. The job gets done. So I showed those pictures, the shows, uh, shows, the, uh, the veterinary, local veterinarians, how to do the orthopedic procedures. Now they are able to do their own. They call me up and they have been fixing the fractures and uh, doing the soft tissue surgery and stuff. I do one thing, give them the education of the veterinarian. Also, I get involved with the personal diplomacy. Uh, uh, like this morning, I had a meeting, uh, we had a breakfast with uh, Honorable Senator Casey. He is uh, very knowledgeable on uh, foreign affairs. He exactly know the key people in Pakistan. He exactly knew what's going on in Afghanistan, what's going on in Pakistan. And he said that the Pakistan is a strategic, uh, important country that America uh, needs, you know, to be good friends with, which is, uh, I, which I find it to be very, very true. And uh, we also dis uh, he also told us that how they are, uh, you know, making the bombs with the ammonium, uh, 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 nitrate fertilizers to uh, control and to check these fertilizer where it is going or something and uh, uh, we will prevail we the, he, he, we will prevail in that part of the world don't they do not start writing the obituary about America that we failed in uh, Afghanistan um, uh, our president Obama is going to review the the policy about Afghanistan when should we come out when we should not come out in December and uh, uh, we will prevail and we will see the America you know, will come out as good. Well, getting yeah. back to the, how the animals are so important, you have veterinary hospitals there, right? I have seven yeah. veterinary hospitals. Which you fact, finance I, yourself? I give it from my personal pocket. Not, just no governmental it. money. No government money, and nothing that's, else. Uh, and yeah. So and, and the animals there are viewed differently than here. And mm -hmm. we got about two minutes. Why yeah. are they so different th than here? You can look in the flood just happened. The, you know, the flood wiped out our, uh, our livestock. And uh, livestock in uh, uh, Pakistan is like ATM. Like when people are rich, they go buy livestock. When they get poor, they go and uh, sell and uh, start, uh, you know, the, they make a living on them. Uh, family depends on the livestock in, uh, in uh, uh, that part of the world. And that is a great, you know, um, uh, economical gain in Pakistan. And if these people did not have the livestock there, the, the, it would be same thing, uh, these people like as in, a, in Africa, famine, more crimes or something, thanks to the livestock and irrigation system in Pakistan. We have a, uh, big rivers in Pakistan, they irrigate, uh, irrigate the like land in Pakistan. Of course, in north of Pakistan, we live on, on rain, but major part of the Pakistan lives, uh, lives on the irrigation. And we are going to have a good ties with India also. We like to be good friends with our neighbors also, something. And we are learning that it's good to be good friends with the neighbor also, so we can, you know, sure. for the goods of the people, mm -hmm. so we can, you know, <coughs> we can uh, give better uh, uh, opportunity for people to pro uh, prosper in that part of the world. And now uh, your uh, relationship with the prime minister is pretty close because you spend two days with him. And uh, I spent two days with him, and, and he invited me in uh, November again to come down. And the government of Pakistan is very receptive for the ideas, and uh, you know, very receptive for you know. You have heard the stereotype of things that American government not is good, Pakistan is not good. 
But when you come and sit down on the desk and see what in front of you have, then you make the assessment what you have. American government is the best and Pakistan government is doing the best. Our ambassador Haqqani, we have a good ambassador in Pakistan. He's keeping a very good uh, relationship with uh, America as, as well as India, uh, our neighbors. And uh, so it's be, you know, like we are transforming into be a uh, prosper nation. So there's a democracy now. And I think we are learning to uh, learning good things from good well, th th people like you. Well, and yeah. we appreciate that. But you know, you've been no stranger. You've been doing this for many, many, many years, as I know you. Okay, and it's, it's so important. But uh, veterinary medicine is, is so important uh, for them. Uh, and you've you've been there. You've spent literally hundreds of thousands of dollars over the many, many years of your own pocket to provide for these animals there, and, and um, that's, um, that's a, a good tribute on your part. And I know you don't like to talk about it, but I just want you to know that's a great deal. Folks, uh, Dr. Anaya Cathio, uh, you can get him at 655-2412. Uh, and uh, if you forget the number, call the station. Uh, we do not get upset. We have his number on file. And for the uh, inexpensive neuter and spaying, uh, 821-9390. And remember, folks, when you buy an animal, make sure you know what you're buying and why and how do they take, take care of them. Uh, Cathio.com, uh, anything you know, 24-7, folks, if you want anyone to watch this show anywhere in the world, uh, you can watch it at SSPTV.com. Go to shows, hit Pets Best Friend, and uh, enjoy the show. We'll see you next time.